G'day everyone and welcome to another Rural Flying Doc presentation. Today we're going to be covering paediatric hip pain. So hip pain in kids can be a common presentation in the GP clinic and luckily it's often a benign and self-limiting cause of the hip pain but unfortunately serious pathology can look like the above and kids can present from uh, on a spectrum of, of complaints from being slightly irritable, having a bit of a limp or even refusing to walk. And if any of these are found, you need to take the complaint seriously and look at a full history examination and refer if necessary. Some of the differential diagnoses that cause hip pain in kids, and that we'll cover today, include developmental dysplasia of the hip, transient synovitis, Perthes disease, slipped capital femoral epiphysis, or SCFE, and the one not to miss, septic arthritis and osteomyelitis. Firstly though, here's a comparison table between the different causes of hip pain. As you may notice that age there is one of the main discriminators. Pain is also found in some of the causes there, uh, especially in septic arthritis, which will have excruciating pain in all movements of the hip. Radiology can also be used to discriminate in some, and I'll re let you read those. Firstly, we'll talk about developmental dysplasia of the hip. It's also known as congenital dislocation. And young babies, you'll find the hip will dislocate posteriorly and superiorly. Interestingly, it's more common bilaterally and only unilateral in a third of cases. And females are highly predisposed uh, at, a, at a ratio to six to one. DDH is picked up with Ortolani sign or Barlow's test, which I'll let you have a look up and Google. And ultrasound is the investigation of choice, not plain X-ray. Management, if you suspect um, developmental dysplasia of the hip, the kid must be referred to your orthopedic paediatrician and the idea is to catch it early. So in the first six months, they can get away with a pavlic harness, which keeps the legs in abduction. Between three to 18 months, then they may need open or closed reduction and a cast, that's a, a pelvic spiker or spiker, however you pronounce it. And above the age of 18 months, you've essentially missed the boat and the child will need an open reduction and may suffer um, long-term consequences from that. Next up is transient synovitis. It has a sudden onset and can follow on after trauma or a recent viral infection, most commonly in ERTI. Luckily, transient synovitis settles back to the normal within a week and the treatment is bed rest, keeping the weight off the hip with crutches and simple analgesia. If you're at all worried though, it's a good idea to refer early and they may need a follow-up X-ray in six months to rule out Perthes disease which interestingly is our next topic. Now Perthes is uh, demonstrated by the collapse of the femoral head and it's akin to avascular necrosis that are found in older populations. This time though males are more affected than females and it can be bilateral. Unfortunately it can be confused with transient synovitis so it's important if you have that niggling suspicion to refer them on. The x-ray will show some signs including a joint space increase and uh, sclerosis of the head and a collapse of the head on certain views. As I said, you need to refer urgently if there's any suspicion and the aim is to keep the femoral head from becoming flat. So again, similar to transient synovitis, taking pressure off that hip using crutches and low impact exercise such as swimming can be beneficial as well. If Perthes isn't detected and it's left untreated, then the child may suffer osteoarthritis from an early age. Slipped capital femoral epiphysis is common, more common in the heavy prepubertal boy. Uh, Murtar describes it nicely as the overweight and undersexed lad. It's uh, bilateral, can be bilateral in 20% of cases, and they'll present with anterior hip and knee pain on that side. The X-ray uh, views of choice are AP and also frog view of both hips. We'll show what that means later. Similar to before, referring on if, if suspected and crutches, and that can even be if the x-ray is normal. If you have that clinical suspicion, then send them on. 
So here's just a picture demonstrating the uh, setup of taking a frog view if you're in a rural hospital. Next up is the diagnosis that we don't want to miss and that is septic arthritis. And a nice thought to keep in your mind with any child that presents with hip pain is could this be a septic joint? This is made more difficult by the fact that the kid can actually look quite well, especially under the age of two years. If you do suspect it and it's available in your hospital or clinic, an x-ray, uh, ultrasound and full bloods before referring on, as I said, refer, refer, refer and time is of the essence. The history and exam for hip pain in a children may mostly come from parents if the child is too young, but the older child might, might be able to give you a good pain history as well. You'd want to know their vital obs, including a temperature. If they're able to walk, then a gait may be able to tell you a bit about their pathology. And the examination should include the whole leg, from hip to knee, foot and ankle. This is because referred pain can be quite uh, a factor here. And knee pathology, including foot and ankle pathology, referred up to the hip for ch children. Unfortunately, kids are poor at localising their pain. Abdominal causes can also be involved as well. So the practice points for paediatric hip pain include that transient synovitis is definitely a diagnosis of exclusion and you should think about all the other serious causes before labelling the child with that. It's a good idea to check the whole leg and hip if a child complains of knee and ankle pain and also vice versa. Avoiding weight bearing in most cases is the go and crutches are often used if able. And of course, early referral is paramount. A lot of these kids can suffer long-term consequences if serious pathology is missed and you'll never have an orthopaedic surgeon get angry at you for checking out a kid's hip if you're worried. Finally, here are some of the references that I used to put this talk together and I'd like to highlight the Royal Children's Hospital guidelines there, which includes a nice flow diagram to help diagnose a child with acutely painful hip. Unfortunately, it's only quite useful in a tertiary hospital with access to full bloods and radiology. Thanks again for watching, and uh, if you have any ideas for future talks, please hit me up at ruralflyingdoc on Twitter there or at the website. Thanks for listening.